how strong is the United States military? Really looking forward to checking out how strong the US military is. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. Let's go straight to this and check this out. Why is the US military the strongest? Tell me. Great military powers have been appearing and disappearing since the beginning of history. True. Now is the time for the United States of America to be the leader in military might. But what makes it so powerful? Will its power remain undisputed? Are there already signs of weakness? Interesting. Does it really stand in a conflict with potential rivals like China or Russia? To find out, we should analyze why exactly the US military is considered the strongest. Right. The numbers. Oh, this is going to be good. The US has 1,400,000 active military personnel. This okay. places it in third place in this category. Yo, China have that many active personnel. Yo. Well, then again, China does have over a billion people, so. China has the largest army with slightly above 2 million soldiers. Wow. While India comes in second place. This doesn't sound that impressive, but what makes the US military stand out is not necessarily the raw number of men. The equipment? The US has unquestionable air supremacy. The US military is number one in air power, with 13,264 total military aircraft. Huh? A total that is greater than the other five greatest air forces combined. Yo, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Aircraft? Oh, bro, this isn't even fair. Wait, I think if you actually add up all of these, it won't even amount to America. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> nah, that's mad. Hey, listen, and what they say, bro, I'm pretty sure there's a saying like, if you control the skies, you'll win the fight. I don't know if that's the right saying, but it's something like that. <laughs> it's whoever controls the skies, bro. Wow. 2085 are air-to-air -air fighters. Okay. 715 ground attack aircraft, 945 transportation aircraft, okay. 5,768 helicopters, and 967 attack helicopters. Wow. The US is number one in each aircraft category, except for air-to-ground forces, where it's slightly topped by Russia. Oh, okay. The US has a powerful... Yo, I ain't gonna lie, though. 13,000? Yo, how, how do you compete with that? Navy that is designed to work in conjunction with its air forces. It has 20 aircraft carriers. 11 are regular fixed wing carriers, while nine are capable of hosting only helicopters okay. and short takeoff planes like the F-35B. Right. Well, they need a lot. They need a lot of these if, for the, all the aircrafts they got. I ain't gonna lie, bro. This is almost half of the world's total number of aircraft carriers, while most of the others belong to allied countries. If we take into account only regular what? fixed wing aircraft capacity, the total combined deck space of the US aircraft carriers is over twice that of all the other nations. Oh, combined. wow. Oh, to complement wow. This. Bro, of all the. Yo, yo, bro, you know it's crazy when you compare in America to all the other nations combined. <laughs> We're not even comparing America at this point to another country. We compared it to every country combined, bro. The US Navy has the greatest number of destroyers and ranks third in the number of submarines. Okay. Wait, why? Why? Hey, America, why are we lacking on submarines? Submarines are good to have, right? What's going on? Why, wait, why has North Korea got so many submarines? Huh? The numbers of the US naval strength are a bit tricky. If we count the total number of naval assets, the US falls in fourth place behind Russia and China. Okay. Even behind North Korea. Yo, I never realized that North Korea, like China, yeah, China, Russia, sure. I never realized North Korea was like so dominant. Well, not dominant because you don't know how good the equipment is, but the numbers were so high for the naval assets. That boasts a surprising first place. Wow. However, in case of a maritime conflict... Wait, where's UK? Wait, hold on. I thought UK have a, a good naval. Wait, we're not even on here. Bro, we're, <laughs> we're behind Finland? Am I blind? Hey, yo. Hey, listen, 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 America. You guys are allies, right? Can we, we, can we just latch on to your numbers? Is, is that okay? Is that okay? If not, just adopt me, bro. Just adopt me. Yeah. And even behind North Korea, that boasts a surprising first place. 
However, in case of a maritime conflict, it would still be hard to counter the power of the US Navy, supported okay. by overwhelming air supremacy and true. allied forces. That is true. Land power. The US is slightly behind Russia regarding raw numbers. American ground forces number 6,280. Wow. Wait, but... Yo, this video was slightly before Ukraine and Russia, right? I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, Russia's got 13,000 tanks. But wasn't he using, like, tanks that was barely even working against Ukraine? So I've... These numbers might be a little bit inflated on Russia's behalf. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. North Korea again with 6,000. Yo. 89 tanks. 39,000 armoured vehicles, 1,465 self-propelled artillery, and okay. 1,366 rocket projectors. Okay, a little bit low However, on this one. Russia has a lot of outdated vehicles with questionable performance right. in case of a real conflict. Yo, this is what I was get this is what I was saying, bro. Like with America, you know for a fact like their numbers are their numbers, and they're gonna be good working equipment vehicles, right? Whereas, like, Russia, yeah, their numbers are high, but are they up to standard? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, I'm not there with a sheet check in Russia's tank, so I personally don't know. But from what I've seen and heard of, like, with the Russia-Ukraine, I don't know about that one, man. Meanwhile, the U.S. military has a broad technological edge. The right, U.S. Yeah. has 5,800 nuclear warheads that make it the world's second largest in nuclear war power. Let's not get scary. In this video, we're analysing the conventional military strength but it can't be denied that a nuclear arsenal does bring a certain status. Even if things don't escalate to a full-blown nuclear war... It... Yo, 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 this is actually scary to think about. I've been watching the new series Fallout. I don't know if any of you guys have seen it, but it's like after a nuclear event, what happens, right? Man, scary stuff, bro. I know everyone won't be turning into monsters like the show, but... <laughs> Yo, scary stuff. It's intimidating to any country to be armoured with such nuclear power. Oh, yeah. The quality. Right, the this US is where Army America dominates. entirely of trained professionals, and many have real combat experience. Right. Since the beginning of this century, the US has been involved in military conflicts in Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Somalia, Libya, Uganda, oh, wow. and Yemen. Oh, wow, okay. While other countries still rely on conscripts to fill the numbers, the US can field an army of well-trained, experienced professionals. The equipment, the military assets, and the technology used in combat have excellent quality. Right. This is the defining reason why US casualties are usually fewer than those of their adversaries. <sighs> a strong ability to project power. Hey, with the numbers, the equipment, and how well trained they are. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't see America losing their dominance power i can't i can't see that ever bro usually fewer than those of their adversaries a strong ability to project power is another defining trait of the united states military size technology and experience are nothing if you can't reach the enemy right okay power projection is the ability of a state to deploy and sustain forces outside its territory only a few states are capable to overcome the difficulties that involve power projection and the u.s excels at it this right. is made possible by several factors. The home base of the US is safe. The neighboring countries are friendly. Potential enemies are far away. The large landmass. Well, yeah. Hey, listen. The neighboring countries of America, you gonna wanna be friendly, bro. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't gonna wanna be that close to America and on their bad side. Yeah. No way. No way. Neighboring countries are friendly. Potential enemies are far away. Right. A large landmass makes it a country that is hard to invade. True. It also has coastlines along two oceans and strategic islands that hold military bases. The US forces can reach far, fast, and deploy great numbers of forces supported by the enforcement of air and sea superiority, combined with excellent transportation capabilities. Even if it Do you know what is crazy? We're talking about like America reaching their enemies, right? Bro. We need to bring up the map because I've seen it before of military American military bases that's across the globe. Wow, bro. Wow. Like they're, they're ready. They're ready anywhere, anytime, man. Transportation capabilities. Even if it doesn't engage in combat, the US can enforce naval and air blockades that can severely cripple an enemy's economy. 
Mad. The US has by far the largest network of military bases operating outside of its territory. Yeah, what I was saying. Information regarding the exact number and location of such bases involves classified information. Oh. So we can only estimate the total extent of... Oh, wow. So even like probably what I've seen, there's, pro there's definitely more. If it's classified, there's definitely more, bro. Overseas military presence. Back in 2013, the Pentagon stated that there were around 600 military bases overseas. Okay. A rough There's estimate more. would be around 1,000 overseas US <laughs> military compounds. Yo! Approximately 165,000 military personnel is stationed outside the United States. Oh, wow. This doesn't include areas of conflict such as Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. The US has significant forces deployed in around 55 countries and autonomous territories. It is also estimated that more than 150 countries have a certain degree of US military presence. Wow. Alliances. Bro, <laughs> yo, how to dominance, like how to show dominance across the globe, right? You just have military bases everywhere. Like you're everywhere. You're ready to go at any point. And bro, there's nothing better than like, if let's say America were at war, it won't be at America, do you know what I mean? Like they're fine. America is that big and they're ready to fight away from America, bro. Yo, America's good. Yo, it's making me want to like move to America just so I know I'm more protected. Because, yo, if, if the UK get in any war, our country's that small, I'm doomed. I'm actually doomed, bro. Yo, what do you guys adopt me, please? The United States can rely on a vast network of a lot. There we are. There we are. Right next to America. There we are. If you like it or not. Hey, hey, you guys go look after us, please. <laughs> alliances. It is the def The United States can rely on a vast network of alliances. It is the de facto leader of NATO, the world's strongest military alliance. Right. 18 other countries are designated as major non-NATO allies. Okay, cool. This list includes countries like Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea, Philippines, Thailand, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Egypt, Israel, Argentina, and Brazil. Interesting. I always thought Taiwan status is a bit. More I always thought Australia was a part of NATO because they're so close to the UK. Interesting. Egypt, Israel, Argentina, and Brazil. Right. Okay. Taiwan status is a bit more complicated, and it can be considered a de facto ally. Some countries are not formal allies, but have a strong strategic partnership with the US. Right. One notable example is India, that participates in regular military drills together with US forces and some of its allies. Oh, wow. I never knew Economy. that. Modern warfare is sustained in the long term by two main factors. The capacity to produce military equipment and the capacity to spend money on defense. Right, you need money. American defense companies are the indisputable top producers of weaponry. Among the world's top 10 defense suppliers, five of them are American companies. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Hey, the UK's made it in a top list. Hey, do you? Hey, good job, UK. Good job, base systems. Top, de top 10 defense companies. Bro, that's crazy to say that five of the top six are America. Like, you guys are really running the show. Lockheed Martin is the biggest. It reported a revenue of almost 60 billion US dollars in 2019. That's close to Russia's entire annual military spending. What? The strength of the US military is also due to its huge military budget. Wow. In 2019, spending on the US military was a whopping 732 billion. Oh my God. Oh my. And. I'm guessing that's the year, right? Is, is that the year or total? Is that the... So due to its huge military budget. In 2019, spending on the US military was a whopping 732 billion US dollars. 732 billion in the year? China 261, where's UK? 48? Wow. Wait, yet again, I think if you add these up, it's not coming to America. Like, yeah, China. China's spending a lot as well, but it's not even half of America. And then the rest is just barely a fraction. <laughs> oh, man. This is crazy, bro. 
That's almost three times more than China, the world's second largest military spender, and is roughly one third of the entire world's defense budget. Wow. While Russia is commonly regarded as the second most powerful army in the world, its budget consists of only $65 billion. <sighs> Arguably, there is an aspect of purchasing power. For example, right. it's cheaper to pay a Russian or Chinese soldier. Okay. But the cost of high quality military equipment is still the same around the world. The reason that the US can afford such an enormous military budget They're is that it's supported by a strong economy. America has been the world's largest economy since 1871. Its nominal GDP is currently 21.44 trillion US dollars. Yeah, like, bro, like, when you actually think about it, when you think about a, a leading company, they're most likely going to be in America. Like, wait, wait, bro, mad, mad. Yo, America's going to be running the show for a very, very, very long time. This is almost a quarter of the global economy. And it's backed with plenty of natural resources, advanced infrastructure and technology. Besides the ability to sustain an enormous defense budget, the US often uses its economic strength as a weapon. Wait, hold on. That's not me back a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. America's economy is a quarter of the whole entire globe's economy. <sighs> That's crazy, bro. Me, 21.44 trillion US dollars. This is almost a quarter of the global economy. Wow. And it's backed with plenty of natural resources, advanced infrastructure and technology. Besides the ability to sustain an enormous defense budget, the US often uses its economic strength as a weapon by enforcing economic sanctions. Okay. Soft factors. Soft power is another factor that comes into play when assessing a country's might. The US is world beating in culture, education and technology. American pop culture has an enormous influence, and it this does. won't change anytime soon. America Love also songs. hosts most of the world's top-ranking universities with a record number of international students. The US leads the world of technology and digitalization as home to the world's most influential tech companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, and yeah, Facebook. There we go. It's easy to think that this doesn't seem important in warfare, but imagine an enemy soldier that would have to attack the country where his cousin studies, the country of his favorite music band, the country of his favorite actors from the movie that he watches on an American media platform. Like, You know what? This is what I actually think about, you know? Like, when people say, especially with what's happening around the world now, like, World War III is going to happen. But I'm thinking, like... How are we going to be in another world war? Like, I'm not saying it's not going to happen or it is going to happen, but I think... How how are we actually going to be in a war when people in that country will have family in the country they're going to want to attack? They'll have, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're so scattered around as people on the planet now. You'll be attacking your own people. Like, let's say in a week, Russia and America decides to launch nukes at each other, right? Hopefully that never happens. But, like, there'll be Russians in America. They might, they'll probably be Americas in Russia, right? I like how she's saying, like, your favorite band, your favorite show, you know what I mean? Like, we got ties to other countries now. That this doesn't seem important in warfare, but imagine an enemy soldier that would have to attack the country where his cousin studies, the country right. of his favorite music band, the country of his favorite actors from the movie that he watches on an American media platform, yeah. like YouTube, or an American smartphone with American software. Finally, there is another critical aspect. It is called the will to fight. And this is the single most important factor in war. Right, the will okay. to fight is the disposition to engage in combat. The determination to keep fighting even when facing precarious odds. And finally, to win. Right, now, you guys can correct me if, you're wrong, if I'm wrong, especially if you're from America watching this. I personally feel like, I don't know if this is because of the movies and the shows, but I personally feel like America's will to fight for their country is way higher than others. Like, for example, if we went to war, I wouldn't be that bothered about fighting for the UK. Because I feel like I don't really have that much of an attachment to my country. Does that make sense? Whereas I, I feel like a lot of people watching this, um, especially if you're American, you guys would want to fight for your country, right? I don't know. Very, very, very interesting. But that, that is a good point. The will to fight. But I, yeah, I feel like Americans are more proud 
to be American. So they would want to fight. At an individual fight. level, a soldier with a low will to fight will avoid engagement with enemy right. and is okay. likely to flee when things get tough. That might a be battle me. is won when the enemy's will to fight is broken. Wars don't end when one military destroys the other. Wars end when one side grows weary of fighting, doesn't see any further purpose in the continuation of the conflict, okay. and gives up. I don't know. Maybe if... Hey, Lizzie, I really hope I never have to go to war. But maybe if, like, the UK got dragged into war, maybe my war to fight would change. But right now, as it stands, bro, I don't want to fight in no war. I don't want to fight in no war, bro. The national will to fight is what keeps a nation fighting. This is commonly linked to a sense of patriotism, national identity, and motivation generated by the idea that one fights for what is right. Yeah, America has a lot of that. has been a strong point of the US, as Americans have been fighting against dictators and terrorists that lack concern for human life and dignity. In contrast, the USA has been regarded as a country that embodies values of freedom, democracy, and rule of law. Right. It was the country that defined such values. Even more, it was the country that was willing to fight for these values. The American soldier has been motivated by a sense of moral supremacy rooted in the country's Christian tradition. Beautiful. However, America doesn't seem to be so cohesive in its values anymore. There are many factors intertwined that provoke this. It's a complex topic that deserves a study on its own. Uh oh. But the outcome is that America is now a country that is greatly divided among ideological lines and systems of belief. Many of its citizens are not sure what to believe in anymore, or even what they stand for. Oh, wow. There have been many lessons in history. Small nations became great empires by holding high moral standards along with a disciplined and motivated army. Hey, look at the UK. Look how small the UK is and how well they, well, how much they conquered, you know what I mean? But how small the UK is, they, bro, back in the day, they did a lot. Don't think we'll ever be doing that ever again. <laughs> but yeah, man. It's true. A great empire's fall was usually preceded by internal strife and moral crisis. The final story of the United States of America as a global power is not yet written. The nation's strength rests upon its citizens and their decisions. It's a matter of this great nation getting back its cohesion and moral compass. Right. That is, if it wants to keep its status as the world's greatest superpower and defender of freedom. Yeah, listen, I feel like that America is going to be the greatest superpower for a very, very long time. The only way I can genuinely see in that being changed, let's say like China created some crazy robots and went to robot war, bro. But that's in many, 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 many years to come. Very, very, very interesting video. I'm just happy that we're allied with America. Really hope that never changes because little, little UK, I don't think we can do too much. I don't know. Really enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.